Hey guys, you may have heard about systemd, and systemd is at the heart of your Linux system, and it's responsible for the initialization of your system, management of various resources like daemons, processes, paths, and more. Now, how you interface with it is by using the systemctl command, and then you would refer to a unit. Now, a unit is an aspect of the system that systemd manages, and we have various types of units. We have uh, service units that are used for daemons. We have socket units for TCP ports. We have path units to manage files and directories. We have target units as well, which are groups of other units. Now, every unit is represented by a unit file that has its configuration. Now, to list the different unit files that we have, we can make use of the command systemctl, and we could say list unit files. And again, take advantage of tab completion over here. So we're going to do a list for uh, unit files, and you can see these are the different unit files that we have. Now, the extension typically is indicative of the type of unit that we are dealing with over here. So you can see that we have things like mounts, we have auto mounts, uh, we have paths, services. Those are big ones. We deal with them quite frequently. Um, scrolling down in the list over here, yeah, lots of services, as you can see. But there are also others like sockets. So you can see that we have a cockpit.socket right now. And then further towards the bottom, you can see targets. Like I said, think of a target as being a group of other units. Now, typically to do management of services, again, we would make use of uh, uh, systemctl. If we wanted to display units of a particular type, we could say systemctl, and we could say list units. So we're going to be listing the units of a particular type. So now we could say dash dash type, and we could specify the type that we're interested in. So we could say service, and it's only going to show us unit types or unit files of the type service right now. So again, you can see we have a, a, a couple of components over here. Let's go and scroll down through the list. Yeah, and a big one that we're going to deal with is uh, sshd.service. So let's go and run that uh, systemctl command to have a look at the status of the sshd service. So the command right now becomes systemctl status sshd. Now what I could do is specify the full name of the unit, uh, including the, uh, the extension. So I could say sys, uh, sshd.service. And that's completely optional. The command would work without it. So it would yield the same result. So what we can see right now is that we are having a look at the unit uh, called sshd.service, which is for the open ssh server daemon. You can see that its unit file is loaded, and you can see the path uh, that the unit file comes from. So this unit file comes from usrlib systemd system sshd.service. And like I said, it's a configuration file. It's currently enabled. And what this means is that whenever the system boots up, that unit file is going to be initialized. That service, in other words, is going to be started. And you can see that the vendor's uh, preset behavior is for it to be enabled. At the moment, it's currently running. So we can see it's uh, active status over there. It's currently running right now, and you can see since when. Since Wednesday, April the 17th. It also gives us some really cool information about the uh, applicable documentation that you may be interested in. So it's referring us over here to man pages. We can see the main process ID as well. We can see the, uh, the tasks, the memory. We can see something about C groups or control groups. And here we have some basic logging information um, that is displayed over here. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go along and uh, I'm going to restart uh, SSHD. So to do that, I'm going to say systemctl restart SSHD. Now, and I want you to just, just to be mindful of the uh, main process ID over there. It's 728. So let's go and restart SSHD. And now we're going to have a look at the status once again. So when you use the restart command against a service unit file, what's going to happen is that the, the service would be stopped and it would be started again. And this means that it would get a brand new process ID as opposed to doing a reload operation. So let's go and try the reload operation. So again, let's just remind ourselves that the main process ID right now uh, is 1391. So we're going to say systemctl reload sshd.service. And again, the dot .service is completely optional. I got there that quickly because I used tab completion. So let's go and have a look at the status one more time. And guys, what we can see over here is that the main process ID has remained the same. Now, the reason why you may want to do a reload of a service is that uh, you may have changed the configuration file that is associated with that service. So let's just say you come along and you want to change how your, how your service behaves. You've changed the configuration file. You see, when that service initially started, it took the configuration file from the file system and it put it into memory. And now it uses the version of the configuration file from memory. Now, in the meantime, what you've come along and done is that you've edited the configuration file on the file system. 
Now, in order to get those changes to be used by your service, what we need to do is that we need to tell the service to go and reload its configuration file. So, when we said systemctl reload, we told the service, hey service, dump your configuration file that you're making use of right now, go and reload the configuration file from the file system into memory, and now it would use that newly modified version. Now, what you did when you did a restart is that you terminated the service. And when you terminate the service or when you stop the service, it would dump its configuration file, which is in memory. Then the restart action would result in the service being started up again. And like I said, when a service starts up, it would go and load its configuration file from the file system, load it up into memory, and now it would use the version of the configuration file that is in memory. So some of the more basic tasks that you need to be familiar with is how you would go about starting a service and how you would go about in enabling the persistent starting of a service. So to do that, you would say systemctl, and you would say start, and you would specify the service by name. So I would go and say something like sshd. If you want to make sure that the service is persistently enabled, you would say systemctl, enable sshd. And that will make sure that whenever your, your system boots up, whenever a system deinitializes, that SSHD is enabled. It is started. So looking at the status of it, you guys, you can see that it's active, it's running. And should I start reboot the system, uh, it will be started again automatically for me. So again, these are some of the more basic things that you need to be mindful of when working with System D. Uh, and System CTL in particular is your interface. It's your gateway into, uh, into operations in the world of System D. So with that, guys, we're going to bring things to a close over here. I will see you in the next video.